Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, and it is time for the complete metallic watercolor showdown. Showdown, showdown, showdown. Yes, we're gonna look at all the different watercolors that I have that are metallic watercolors, pit them against each other, and there you can see what's gonna be best for you and whether or not you need to invest in something else because you can see what you have and see how it compares to all the other things. Now, I don't have every, believe it or not, I don't have every metallic watercolor out there, but I do have a lot gathered over the years, and even I was surprised when I swatched these out next to each other to see what was um, what was the best. So I'm going to start off where this idea came from. Um, I had several people leave comments on my review of these watercolors, which are the Paul Rubens Metallic Set of 24. You can see these are absolutely gorgeous colors on black and on white. Um, I like that they were bright on both colors. And uh, I just really liked how everything was just ready to go. Spray them with water, let them sit for a couple minutes, and then you're good to go with your painting. And the quality was just really nice and in good sturdy tin and very convenient. But I surmise that probably most other paints that we already had were similar, so you might not need to invest in a new set. I started getting comments um, and questions of people asking me to compare this to other sets. Now, in the video, I compared them to the... Um, um, the kind of Prima slash Hobby Lobby um, watercolors, and they were quite comparable. We got our colors, and I've shown you that in the other video. So pretty comparable, but way cheap. These these were way cheaper. So a set of twelve would go for um, about ten dollars, and a set of twenty four would go for twenty dollars. However, I bought mine half off on sale, which they go all the time. And these are also the same as the Primo watercolor sets that go for twelve or so each. So that was definitely half the price or less of the Paul Rubin set for a very similar quality. So I started to think about this and think about the other sets I had, and and I had a viewer ask me about the Twinkling H2Os, which are these paints right here and they had a bunch of these but they didn't use them very much and I can totally see why because every single color you have to take the pot the cap off the pot spray it let it sit five minutes paint with it then you gotta let it dry completely because if you cap it off before it's dry it will mold that's why these are all sitting here because I've recently swatched them um, so it's just kind of a hassle to use that product um, so I went ahead and I swatched out all my other colors so let's look at the twinkling h2o's here are some watercolors in no particular order. So these little pots like this, this is what they look like, this section here on dry paper. Now these cost about $3 each. You may save some money on set in sets. You may pay a little bit more at some places, but roughly $3 each. They have a very subtle sheen, but they do have pretty vibrant colors on white. And then when I swatched them out on color, I was very surprised to see they really, I mean, if you tip them to light, they do have a, a pretty color there. They're um, very subtle. They're definitely not as vibrant as the um, as the uh, Paul Rubens, which we can see right here on this little swatch, or as the cheapos from Hobby Lobby that are way cheaper than the Twinkly Inch 2Os. There. So the, the Paul Rubens for reference, about $2 a pan, you know, because it was like $49 for 24 so it's a little over a dollar a pan, a little over two dollars a pan, I mean. Um, so they're, these were cheaper, and I found them to be much more metallic, and they um, they also looked really nice on white paper, although the Twinkling H Shoes definitely have more color in them, so they're going to show up a lot better if you were just using them on white paper. So if that's what you want, those are a great option for you. I was also looking at all the other <laughs> paints that I had, and I'm just going to go in order of my swatch sheets, and hopefully that will help you. So right here we have the Ken Oliver um, Liquid Metals, and these are, you get six for about $20, or they're about $4 each. They look like this. And then you shake them up and you use them. This is a, um, trying to see the size on here. It's very difficult to read that. I'm guessing it's about half an ounce, maybe. Let me look on this one. I might be able to read it better. Uh, half an ounce, yep. Um, and these are pre-mixed metallic watercolors. As you can see, they come out very saturated. And on black, you can see they actually show up fairly well in black and they're quite reflective. So that's kind of fun if you like to do a lot of techniques on like either black glossy cardstock or um, direct to paper techniques where you might just want to like, like maybe drag 
um, utensils through them to make some like paste paper like designs or like what I would do is I would brayer on some of this onto some glossy black cardstock put a stamp in it and then twist it and lift it up that's a um, technique I learned from Judy over Judy Kins Judy and it just looks really neat so that would be really great for when you want a lot of color and you want direct to paper so four dollars a color a little bit more expensive than the twinkling h2o's but a lot more um a lot more vivid a lot more metallic uh so the next wave here is the jack richardson these are very large pans and they, they are sold individually they look like this these came in a smart art box that's why i happen to have these i think they're pretty new so these are about four dollars and here's how they swatched out on the white paper right there and then we will find them on the black paper right here. Uh, pretty subtle, um, kind of natural looking metallic. Doesn't knock my socks off, but I only have two colors, so it's kind of tough to ascertain a good, um, you know, good feel for a range out of two colors, but there's that. This one here clocks in at our most expensive product. This is the Schmincke Aqua Bronze. Here you can see it, these two colors here on black. You can see it's very reflective. It also comes off on your fingers a little bit, so this would be best for something under glass, like on some fine artwork. And here it is on white, so still very metallic. Probably my most metallic product, but these are about 20 bucks a bottle, and here's what the bottles look like. They are a dry pigment, and you have to you take out what you need for a project, and you mix it with water on your palette, and you apply it to your project. You don't want to pre-mix this stuff, um, because it won't be as shiny. You want to take out what you need fresh. Um, because it's kind of a little bit of an ordeal to use. They would not be my top pick, but they are gorgeous when you use them. But uh, 20 bucks, 20 bucks for one of these. I think that's a little crazy, but it's it's an option if that's what you want. Um, and let's see, what's next? I already did that one. Oh, the Blick Liquid Watercolor. Now this product here doesn't really do much on white paper. And what you're getting is a gold mica, a pearl mica, or a silver mica, and liquid like gum Arabic, like a binder and some water, basically. They are not going to really show up on white, but they show up pretty well on black. They have a pearl-like luster. They're not super metallic. And the gold is pretty metallic, but the silver and pearl are definitely more of like a pearly metallic. What I really like these for, get a load of this. These are, um, I think, about three... 387 for an eight ounce bottle so the amount is huge you can mix this with your other watercolors so if you had um some inks or some really transparent watercolors you mix this with it and like for your warm colors use your gold for your cool colors use the pearl or the silver and you can make your own liquid watercolors i personally like these best for making my sprays like spray mists for crafting because they don't clog like when i would scoop in pearlex into my spray bottles of ink um they would clog a lot but i found these not to clog very much and they're so affordable and these are available at dick blick this is a uh, or blick art materials blick.com i believe um this is certainly probably the best value out of all the products i'm going to show you today uh and but i would use it kind of more of, of, as a like a base supply that you make other supplies with okay now the next one is yarka and yarka has these full-size pans and they offer i think the only metallics they offer is a gold copper and pearl uh, maybe they offer other ones. I just don't have them. That's certainly a possibility since these are not as easy to find in the United States. I got these from an Etsy seller. Um, but they did work pretty well. The gold isn't super shiny. It's more of like an antique color. The, the copper is really nice and the pearl is pretty nice too on black. And we'll take a look at that on white. Oh, I wanted to mention that all of the dry colors I spritzed and let sit for a couple minutes before I swatched them out, which is really important to do when you are working with um, metallics. They seem to just need, a, need to have a little water on them first. Okay, the next one we're going to look at, oh my gosh, this was the surprise. I was really, and I want to show you this next to the Paul Rubens because that's kind of like my favorite one so far. Um, these Komarabi paints. Now these are steel. Uh, there's a set of 40 paints, and I did review this at one time. It was 40 paints for $24, and um, then you get eight, eight neon, eight metallic, and the rest are your standard watercolors. Um, but, I mean, look at how shiny and how opaque those are in the coverage. I was really surprised at how well these inexpensive paints did. Um, on white, we have them right there on white. They held up really well. I'll show you the Paul Rubens on white just as a comparison. Obviously not as many colors and not quite the, um, you know, quite the 
variety, but um, but still, I thought they were gorgeous. And for a bargain like that, and you know, if you just want to get one set that has a bunch of different options, I'll show you here. This is what it looks like. Um, I reviewed that, I don't know, maybe a year and a half ago or so. Um, you know, for a, such a nice variety of colors, the only thing I the think, the reason why I don't use this very much is because there's no mixing area. There is this little liner that goes over your paints, and I mixed on that, but since it's clear, it's really hard to see what you're mixing, so you kind of need a palette to go with this, and that is the only reason I don't use these more often. Um, but 24 bucks, 40 colors, and eight of them to be such rich metallics. I think that that is something to consider, um, or even a gift if you're looking for somebody that wants a variety. Because sometimes you want those neons, maybe not for a final artwork you're going to hang up, but if you're doing art journaling or card making, having those metallics are really nice. Okay, so the next one we're going to, oh, you know what, let's look at the, um, the swatches of the Prima slash Hobby Lobby paints next to those Kumarabis and see how those look. I think they're going to be very similar. I've got too many swatches here. So I, and I also, I was going to just photograph these, but then I thought I'll do a video because then I can actually tip them to the light and you can see. But look at that. I mean, they're so comparable and they're such a bargain. These are a bargain too. And I love the Paul Rubens. I think quality wise, the Paul Rubens are my favorite, but that's 50 bucks. And if you're only going to use it once in a while, it might not be worth it to you. It might totally be worth it to you, but only you can... Only you can know that for sure. The next one, I was really surprised at how nice these were. These were the Niji, and I'll show you here. These are about, get this, hold on to your hats, six bucks. These are like six dollars or less, sometimes they're less, um, but 21 colors. Now the thing to keep in mind here is that you don't get a ton of color here. These wells are really shallow and, um, you know, it's, you're just not getting as much, so this is probably like, I don't know, a, a quarter of the amount that you would get in a pan of these, but six bucks. So this is what they look like. And I'll just show you the next some more expensive ones just so you can get you can get an idea. Obviously they're not quite as shiny as the Paul Rubens, but boy, you get a nice variety. And I think for six dollars, it's the way to go. If you want to experiment with it or you want to see if you like working with metallics or you want to see if you're actually going to use them before you spend 50 bucks, um, that is a good option. Or if you just want something to put an accent on some embossed cardstock or something. So on white, they're not that as impressive. The shimmer isn't as much as you would get on, um, on like, say, the Paul Rubens. But then again, you know, I mean... Obviously, it costs less. There's going to be less mica in there. They do feel a little chalky, um, which is probably why they stand up so well on the um, on the black. But I think that they are probably the biggest bargain um, because they're just such a deal. Although, if you get the Hobby Lobby ones on sale, the set of 24 for ten dollars, then of course that would be a better uh, a better deal. So, there you go. Everyone has different things available to them, so I just wanted to show these different options, and I'll link up what I can, but um, just take notes, otherwise, because if it's something that you have to get in a store, then obviously you have to get in a store. Okay, the next one I want to share is the, did I, go, I did all the ones on here, I'll get another card here. The next one I'm going to share is the Shimmering Lights by Prima. These are my probably least favorite out of all of the um, all of the options for a shimmering color. The reason for that is that they're all very beige. There's not a lot of um, variety in color, and the colors don't really jump out at me. It's not like I, I really don't see myself using many of these colors. In fact, the palette is practically new because. I have not found a way to really use this palette. This palette is still so limiting to me. I think I'd be better off to take out these colors and put them in a larger palette with some other things. Like maybe put them in my Arteza palette because there is a free row in there and then having that to mix in with those colors would probably make much more sense because look at that. I mean, I think I've only used it for swatching maybe a few doodles. I just really can't think of something to do with these paints. So I personally, these are $25. Um, I think because there's not such a variety of color there and you're really limited as what you can use it for, unless you're doing a lot of like maybe brush lettering or calligraphy where you need a lot of variety of golds or you're maybe doing wedding invitations and you, you just want a variety of those richer neutral muted metallics. Um, other than that, I really have a hard time finding a use for this. I suppose you could use it for complexions um, if you wanted kind of like slightly sparkly vampire elves or something like that. I don't know. But for me, if you have an idea to use this palette, please let me know in the comments below because 
it's just sitting there. It's sitting on my shelf with my other Prima palettes not being used. So I'd love to have some ideas. So if you have them, please, please let me know. And just on black, I just feel like they're not opaque enough. They're not, they're just not doing it. I, I really don't recommend that one. Now, another surprise was my handmade eyeshadow watercolors, which I did a video on how to make water uh, metallic paints from eyeshadow. And I told you how to do acrylic and watercolor. And I'll put a link for that. This is what I did with them. I actually took some, um, just some old containers that I had and I put them, they kind of screw onto each other and that's what I used to store them. You obviously would use whatever you want. Um, with any of these paints I'm showing you today, you want to let them dry out open to the air before you pack them up. Um, I was when I was digging through and getting my palettes ready, and I'll show you how to fix the, I'll tell you how to fix the problem if this happens, but when I got this palette out, I had a few of my colors that had like mildew on the top. It was like a dusty like mold or mildew or something. I just took a, a tissue and I wiped it off. It was powdery. It wiped right away. But um, I don't know if sometimes some of these paints use maybe fish scales instead of mica. I don't know. But it's something about these types of paint. It could be the glue. They might use like an animal hide glue or something um, in these paints. Maybe because they're... Uh, I don't know, because of that weird sheen they have to them, they may use an animal glue and that might be why. But if you let them dry closed up tight, they're gonna mold. So don't do that, let them dry to the air, make sure they're fully dry before you close them up. That's why we have this palette mess going on and I figured I might as well show you uh, all of these rather than just post pictures on my blog because then I can pick them all up and, and show you how they look. But these are my homemade ones. They actually did fairly well, my homemade eyeshadow ones. So I took eyeshadow from the Dollar Tree. It was the LA Colors Powdered Eyeshadow. It comes in a little pot. Actually, Actually works really well in, in place of like Perlex and what you want to do is look for the colors that list mica as your first ingredient. Some of them will list talc as your first ingredient and that's going to give you a chalkier color but if you get the ones that uh, list mica first then you'll have these really shiny colors. I just added a little gum arabic to it and that was it so it's nothing it's not rocket science but I have the tutorial on my channel if you want but these are the colors that I made and it made actually some really pretty colors. I really like this gold. The pink was very sheer and glittery. The copper was more pearly. Um, and then these other ones like that one, the black um, is a little bit shimmery. The silver isn't Actually, I think that was another, this was actually this color here, but it looks like that. Probably because it had too much talc in the recipe and that the, of the eyeshadow, and that's why it's not as shiny. But if we look at it here, you're just going to really subtle sparkle. I think this would be really pretty on an, like um, on a card if you were painting, like you'd stamp like maybe a fairy or something. You could go over the hair with this, um, or you could go just kind of brush it over something you colored with Copics to give it just a shimmer, because if you went over Copics with watercolor, it's not going to mess up that ink, and you could get like a really pretty effect that way. And that the pearl there just gave you a really soft uh, shimmer. I was surprised at how well they held up compared to some of the other ones, quite frankly, <laughs> because I was kind of thinking, oh, Dollar Store eyeshadow that's probably not going to hold up very well. My favorites, I think, I probably have already called something else my favorite. Well, I think my favorites are the Paul Rubens, but um, but they're expensive. Um, I like these homemade ones I made with my pigments from Xanadu Studio on my uh, making homemade watercolor video. And those I just have in, in some pans. Look at this tin. It's so cute. Um, I was in Belfast, Maine, and there was this cute little uh, store that was all like... Um, eco-friendly stuff and I, there was a cute little set of watercolors there and I just love the tin actually there were two different tins the same set of watercolors but I drew the line I'm like I'm only getting one and then I took those colors out and put them with my distress oxides because they were chalky and horrible but they work really well with the distress oxides because they have that same exact finish so even bad art supplies can be put to use and be useful and good for something else so I put them in here because the Xanadu um, handmade watercolors all have a little bit of a shimmer to them. Here, here you can see. Um, so I mixed in the ones that I made, which are the really bright metallics, with the ones that I got from their shop that you can purchase pre-made. And um, I thought they would, you know, they'd be good to live there together. And uh, I didn't swatch out the gold because that one's up in my paint box upstairs and I didn't have it down here. But um, you can see, I think they're pretty... They're pretty comparable to the Paul Rubens if you wanted to get pigments and make it yourself. However, they would be more expensive than buying the Paul Rubens. Then you'd have to get pans and all of that. Um, probably sounds like I'm just doing this big advertisement for the Paul Rubens, but I'm just trying to compare everything because you guys asked me, or several of you did, and I decided while I'm at it, I'm just going to get out all my metallic watercolors and put them side by side. 
So let me see if there's anything I have. Oh, here's one. Turner. Turner makes a liquid watercolor. They are available in 15 milliliter tubes and they are uh, $6. So, or I think you get a set of four for maybe $20, so it's a, like a buck cheaper if you get them in sets of four. On black paper, you it's really hard to see the undertones, like that's a pink and you can hardly see, uh, that's a blue, it doesn't really show up well. Uh, but on white watercolor paper, the colors are a little bit more distinct. Um, they're pretty, they're subtle, they don't knock my socks off, and they're kind of expensive. So, um, yeah, so, so there you have it. And I did actually work from a dry pan here, even though that's a tube, I have them dried down in pans, and that's where I got my color from, just like I did with any of the other uh, standard watercolors here. And I think that we have gone through all of them. Now, I will try to get good photos of these. Um, I'll, what I'll probably do is end up cutting all of these apart and putting them with their, you know, kind of trying to organize them a little bit because it's a little disorganized here the way it is now. Uh, but I just wanted to go through and kind of show you what these look like all swatched out. Um, to recap, I really think the... Um, the... <laughs> the Paul Rubens, who isn't Pee Wee, well, Paul Rubens, everyone's like, why does Pee Wee Herman have a set of watercolors? It's not that Paul Rubens, it's Peter Paul Rubens, the guy that painted the, you know, um, ladies that were very, um, voluptuous back in the Renaissance. Was it Renaissance or Rococo? Rococo period. Uh, so that's who the paint is named after, not Pee Wee Herman. Uh, but... Anyway, there's a lot of options out there. There's some big differences between some, and there's small differences between some. If you have any of these, I suggest you try using them and seeing what you think before buying something else. But if you don't have any yet, this gives you um, this gives you a good idea as to what to expect. Um, my picks would definitely be uh, for budget option the Niji set for between four and six dollars depending on where you buy it there's a 16 color set and there's a 21 color set this is the 21 color set you don't get very much in a pot but um, it'll give you an idea of how you like these um, if you want to spend a couple more bucks and you get these on sale I would recommend the um, kind of the Prima ones or Prima slash unbranded Hobby Lobby ones which you can get for anywhere from 10 to 24 dollars for a set of 24 I think if you're getting the Prima ones, you have to buy two sets. You'd have to buy two sets of twelve for around twelve dollars each. So about a dollar a color, and you do get a lot more in the pans on these, though. So if you knew that you you were going to go through a lot of it, you probably would save money by going with this because you get more color. You see, you get a lot. This is pretty thick and it's pretty well full and this is also good for bigger brushes and in fact I would recommend these over the Paul Rubens if you were using if you want to use a large brush um, and do like some stroke work florals or uh, something like that because it's going to be difficult to get a big brush in the half pans that the Paul Rubens have and um you know, and, and use them them easily. And if you, you know, you want to get the best of the best, I would recommend the Paul Rubin set because I think opacity, uh, the color co clarity and color quality from dark to light paper, the, the colors all stayed unique on both. And, um, and I like that you have an option of shimmer, pearl colors, and also glitter colors. So you have both uh, textures in one set. Um, but really, I'm really looking hard for differences between some of these so you you know you've got to go with what's best for you and if you know you like to do a lot of mixed media and you want more of like an inky quality to your to your work I would definitely consider the Ken Olivers um, you get six bottles for 20 bucks the bottles seem to be pretty long lasting so I just put like a drop and just kind of spread it around with the tip of the nozzle and that was lots lots of color and that did show up pretty well on black too they showed up uh, and, and the, even the black liquid watercolors if you just want some basics that you can add other media to. So you could take that and add it into your spray inks. You could take that and add watercolors or reinkers or things to it. That would probably be your most versatile and uh, very inexpensive option. So I'm going to write this up in my blog. I'm going to do a blog post about this. So um, I'll put that link in the video description. Hopefully I'll have them publish at the same time because I have a feeling I'm going to get a lot of specific questions about specific brands that I showed. So I think it will be easier for me to organize all of this in a blog post. But I did want to, I wanted to have these swatches out so I could kind of, um, I could kind of, kind of tip these to light and show you. And this is a thing. Oh my gosh, it's so hard because I'm looking and I'm like, well, then again, I also want to recommend the Komarabi because look how beautiful those colors are. And if you happen to be like, well, I only have 25 bucks I can spend on all my watercolor supplies. I don't want to invest them all in liquid, in metallic watercolors. Well, I would say get this one because then you've got 
you've got metallics, you've got neon, or you're buying a gift for somebody, you're buying a gift for your your child, your your grandchild, and you're like, well, they don't have any watercolors yet, I don't know what to pick. Well, this one has, you know, um, let's see, 24 standard watercolors, uh, a black and white, uh, six fluorescents and eight metallics. So, I mean, that would probably be the most versatile set. So it just depends on what you're after. There's nothing here I would absolutely say, do not buy, stay away from, it is awful. It totally depends on what you are, um, what you plan on doing with your with your art. So I hope this was helpful and not more confusing and didn't make you want to buy a bazillion things that you didn't even know you needed before, because um, <laughs> that was not my intention. Uh, but I will, um, I'll try to organize my thoughts a little bit on the blog post with photos so that you can, you can kind of compare, like scroll up and down the screen and compare, and I think that'll be good. Wow, I didn't think this was going to take 25 minutes. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up before you go. And until next time, happy crafting.